Good afternoon, everyone. Today I would like to talk about the severe ice storm that ripped through Slovenia, Germany, Austria, and the Czech Republic, which was not really reported in the Western news media in the United States or Canada. It's called zonal censorship. Let's talk about record cold temperatures in Russia, 40 degrees Celsius below zero, as well as these ice storms that never made the U.S. news. In the beginning of November this year, a severe ice storm swept through Europe, down power lines, stranded people, hundreds of thousands with no electricity, rail lines disrupted, road travel disrupted. But in the U.S., never heard word one about this. Let's take a look at really what happened. As you can see, it was an ice storm, but the ice was blowing sideways. The winds were so severe. They had 80 mile an hour winds blowing this ice. Borderline hurricane winds blowing an ice storm. Lower Austria ice storms triggered evacuations. And you can see the severity of the wind. It had to be a constant wind blowing that way for these ice accumulations on top of these objects. Down power lines, five centimeters of ice. That's two inches thick. A few more images. Trees are crystallized. Although the U.S. was in severe outbreaks of snow and record cold in the southeast United States, as well as in Buffalo, New York, dropping eight feet of snow in three days. You thought on top of that media frenzy there might have been something about Europe included in this, but I guess with the warming agenda, they can't purport that there are too many cold events going on. Some pictures from Lower Austria. Fire department coming in to trim off those branches off the power lines. This is from today's European Severe Weather Database. Those red inverted triangles in southern Europe, southern Spain, southern Italy, southern Greece, southern Turkey, those red triangles are tornadoes or funnel clouds coming down. The yellow boxes all across northern Europe, heavy gale force winds, heavy snows have brought the Autobahn, 50 kilometers of it to a standstill. I mean, the Germans are no strangers to snow, but obviously there's something happened there where they can't even keep one of the main arteries in interstate travel in the country open. Speaking of extreme snowfalls, let's take a look here. This is from Rutgers Snow Lab. This is the Eurasian snow extent for the year. These bars are a full year total, so as you can see already in the first couple of months, we're far above 2013 year total snow averages. I'm sure when the December totals come in and we, we tally December, that'll be far above the 1977. They'll have to put a new parameter bar, probably around 15 or 16 million square kilometers, to push that number up. And in the fall northern hemisphere snow extent, as you can see, the same thing. It seems to be an upward trend. 2011, 12, 13. Those are entire year totals. Look how far above we are already at 22 million square kilometers this early in the year. Different representation here. You can see the actual snow cover by continent and country here. The blue represents totals that are double the usual amount. So when you look in there, you can see how thick the snows are as well. Now one thing we never heard about in the U.S. media was the extreme cold temperatures of 50 below zero, 45 below zero from Russia in the same time that there were those ice storms. Now interestingly, 10 months ago, pretty much to the day on February 4th, Slovenia and Eastern Europe also were pounded with ice. Take a look at how thick this is on the branches there. Commerce has to come to a standstill when everything's caked in ice like this. Freak blizzard, 66 million euro in damage. Slovenia's got some incredible architecture. Look how beautiful that ice is on the railing. This is what an ice-covered forest looks like. And imagine going out to your car in the morning to try to chip that off to get to work. I don't think anybody went anywhere. I think I might get lost looking for directions through the ice. That's at least a couple inches thick on those signs. Ice is so heavy, it's going to bring down these power lines. It's going to clog things up. There's no, there's no current moving through there. At that point, it becomes a statue, unusable infrastructure. Now, global climate change is happening. I agree that it is happening. It's always happening. It's always been changing. It's continually changing. If you look at 1200 BC, it was far warmer than it is today. If you look back in the mini ice age, it's far cooler than it is today. 
although we are going into a cooling trend, so we could catch up with that minus 2 degrees Celsius drop over the next few years. But climate change is just part of the Earth and existence on this planet. It's always changing. We didn't have motorized vehicles 1,200 years ago, but it's warmer then than it is now, so please explain that to me. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of the video. Again, this is called zonal censorship, where they show you the news in your local area because they have to, because your body feels the cold, your eyes see the snow, and your eyes see the ice. But in other parts of the world, they don't really report on it. And then they'll give out stories of, oh, it's, you know, the warmest it's ever been, and 